The men's team finishes up play with some question marks heading in to the Big 12 tournament. Plenty of action on both baseball and softball diamonds. Plus, Sporting KC beat writer Griffin Hughes joins us to talk a little football. 10 at 10 is next. And welcome on in to Good Morning KU, 10 at 10 edition. Lots of Kansas sports, plus we dive into some professional happenings uh, from across the nation, including a dazzling play from Steph Curry. Wait till you see that one. I'm Jackson Long. Good to have you on board. We'll tip off the show with Kansas' final regular season game down in Norman against the Sooners. Let's take a look at the highlights now. Jayhawks down one. It's Devontae Graham over to Kelly Oubre, and it's a lead, a two-point lead for the Jayhawks with seven minutes to play. Remember, no Perry Ellis in this one. He's out with the sprained knee. In drives, Oklahoma. Spangler gets the two-pointer to even up the game at 58. Two minutes to play now. Tipped ball, finds its way over to Devontae Graham. He hits a big shot and gets Kansas back in the game. They were down four at that point. Now it's just one. And with a minute 30 remaining, Buddy Heald misses the layup. Another tip in, right place, right time for Ryan Spangler, so he gets to follow. Now three, down three now, Kansas gets fouled. With just five seconds remaining, Frank Mason goes to the line. He makes all three free throws. Ensuing possession, and ensuing possession always means something bad. Down the court goes Oklahoma, a tip ball in right at the buzzer. Buddy Heald wins the game for Oklahoma right as the clock expires in a game that had little long-term meaning, but it ended up going to Oklahoma's way. So now everything goes into the Big 12 tournament. Uh, we'll touch back with the team regarding that conference tournament, but first, a give and go with Kansas Hoops. Here's on the women's size now. The women came up short in their first round of the Big 12 tournament on Friday, going down to Kansas State, 57 to 49. In her last game as a Jayhawk, Chelsea Gardner finished with 14 points and 12 boards, adding yet another double-double to her legacy. Lauren Aldridge, the freshman point guard, went for 12 points and four rebounds, four assists, but the two were not enough to lead the depleted Jayhawks to a victory. Kansas played with just seven players in the game. And switching back to the men's side, Bill Self's team will head an hour east on Thursday to play in the Big 12 tournament at the Sprint Center. Cliff Alexander's status still in question, and all Big 12 forward Perry Ellis still not 100% with that knee. The team, as usual each year, is in for some tough battles in Kansas City. Jayhawks will face the winner of Kansas State and TCU, who play in a first-round game on Wednesday. On the baseball diamond now, the Utah Utes came into Lawrence and took two of three from the Jayhawks this weekend. Kansas won the Friday slate 7-5 before being outscored a combined 13-5 on the weekend. Jayhawks have a home match against Central Michigan tomorrow at 3. And on the softball side, again a successful weekend down in Florida. This time it was at the Stetson Tournament taking on LaSalle, Chattanooga and the host team Stetson. Jayhawks go 4-1 on the weekend, outscoring opponents by a huge margin, 40-10. This weekend, Jayhawks, uh, they host their own tournament, the Jayhawk Invitational, starting on Friday at 3.30 p.m. against Northern Colorado. And here is your tweet of the day, in which we will conveniently slide in our man Griffin Hughes onto your TV screen behind it. It's Russell Westbrook just going off for, Kansas, for Oklahoma City right now. I wish they were, the Thunder were in Kansas City. Um, they, they we're doing incredible stuff. Michael Jordan, ask you could say. Uh, Griffin, what's your take on how well Russell Westbrook's played? The guy's a freak. I mean, come on. I mean, he's, he's averaging a triple-double when Kevin Durant misses games. I mean, it's, it's just unbelievable. He's the greatest, point or the greatest athlete to ever play point guard. And it shows he can do a little bit of everything or, you know, like his triple-double suggests, a lot of bit of everything. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic numbers that have been put up. And really, we haven't seen since Michael Jordan went seven straight games back in 89 with triple-doubles. All right, so we brought you here for a reason. Uh, the big man now is a beat writer for uh, Sporting KC for the Kansans. So let's break down the season opener. Well, you know, I seem to change titles every time. That's I true. You're chameleon. So. Fantastic. But, um, no, the, the, the opener was a lot of fun. The, the fans... Uh, they really got into it. There was uh, fireworks going on. There was a, a great singer doing the national anthem. The players were amped. They were ready to go. And, uh, you know, they, they came out ready to win. And, and the Red Bulls, they really played a tremendous game. 
uh, in order to even hold a tie because uh, Casey had done a, a really, really good job uh, both defensively and, and offensively getting their counterattacks rolling. Uh, Graham Zussi, I mean, he was kind of up and down all game. But uh, uh, Benny Feilhaber was really the guy that made everything happen. I mean, uh, whether he was going through the middle, he was getting some really good steals, uh, or, you know, the one goal, he was coming around the wing. So he had a tremendous game. And if he can do that all season, that's a guy that a lot of people didn't really expect to step up in that mm -hmm. way. Yeah, so Fellhaber and then Zussi, two of the more familiar names for uh, the local crowd for Sporting KC. Some new faces, too. So what can we expect uh, on that front? Well, uh, Roger Espinoza is back, and so, uh, you know, longtime KC fans will remember him, and uh, he's looking great. I mean, playing in England will, will do you wonders uh, as, as soon as he gets uh, back into the flow of being in the MLS and playing these teams, uh, he'll do much better. Um, I mean, the, just some of the guys, the, some of the pieces that they're trying to plug in. Uh, Ike Opara is finally healthy, and he scored the one goal yesterday, so you see how that works out. Um, you know, it, it's just a matter of if they can plug all these different pieces in and uh, make sure that they play well together. And they came out with a new formation yesterday. Uh, it worked really well because it allowed them to play through the middle as opposed to playing around the wings. Mm -hmm. And so it took some of the stress off of Zussi. And uh, I honestly think they could have won that game if Beasler hadn't been sent off. He got his second yellow uh, in the 75th minute or so. Um, obviously, Coach Vermey didn't like that. <laughs> but uh, I think if he stayed on, Casey would have had a real chance to win that game. All right. Obviously, a great atmosphere to open up the season there at Sporting Park. Now, Sporting moves to the Western Conference this year. They've been playing in the Eastern Conference. How do you think that affects play in the MLS this year? Well, I think nobody said it better than the uh, New York Red Bulls coach. Someone asked him, uh, what does uh, Sporting KC's move to the uh, Western Conference mean? He said, I feel sorry for him. <laughs> um, Much tougher league, absolutely. <laughs> it's like the NBA almost, too. A little bit, yeah. The, the Western Conference is, is tough. Um, obviously, your defending champ, the LA Galaxy, is in it. So it's going to be a tough conference to play in. But uh, to have to go to Seattle mm -hmm. and play in the, in the best home field advantage in the MLS, uh, play the Timbers, who are really good. The Rapids have built up to be a little bit better. Um, this, I mean, this is a very deep and talented Western Conference. But I think, you know, there's a reason Sporting KC can compete, and, and they belong there. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see how that shakes up and down. Uh, yeah, as, as the standings find their way and, and the tables start to settle. Absolutely. Um, all right, we're going to get into our highlight of the night. We promised you it was awesome, so here it is. Uh, Steph Curry doing Steph Curry things right there. And that's, that's between the legs, some unknown move I've never heard of before. And just a fantastic shot from him. Oh, yeah, unbelievable. I mean, he's, a, he's, he's confusing. I mean, is that, that's Chris Paul, right? I yes, think, who's I mean, reaching. That's, that's a guy who's one of the better defenders on the perimeter in the NBA and certainly one of the best on-ball defenders we've seen in the last 10 years. I mean, he looked like a first grader. I mean, he yes. had no idea what was what was going on. Uh, and Steph Curry, I mean, he can do a little bit of everything. Yeah, a there's bit, a little hocus a pocus like there, too. Yeah, that was fantastic. Obviously, one of the probably top five guys maybe in your MVP, uh, um, along with a guy like, like Westbrook. I think well. for me, he's number one. He's still number one, uh, just because uh, a function of how many games Westbrook missed at the beginning of the year. And the Warriors having such a great team this year. Right, exactly. And that'll be, that'll be a consideration. Team success will bring it in as well. Yeah, yeah. All right, we'll flip over to NFL now. It's free agency time. It's really started to heat up lately. Uh, we'll start here in Kansas City, though. A big signing, Jeremy Macklin, that receiver who used to play at Missouri. Mm -hmm. um, I think this will be a good move for Alex Smith. I mean, he's, he's finally got a target who is uh, uh, an experienced receiver in the NFL. He's a guy who knows what he's doing. He's played with Andy Reid before when Reid was at Philly. Um, I always thought that he was a little bit uh, underrated, but that being said, it was because he's in the slot a mm -hmm. lot of times when Deshaun Jackson is on the field. If he's yes. supposed to be the number one receiver, uh, there's still some question marks there, but certainly a move in the right direction. Yeah, Kansas City obviously need, needing a ton of help. Uh, Macklin had 10 touchdowns last year. Chiefs receivers had zero. Yep. Uh, over to Nadamik and Sue, who went from the Lions to the Dolphins. How big is the impact he's going to make on the defensive side? Well, I mean, anytime you get uh, a real, you know, line plug like Nadamik and Sue, uh, it helps everybody out on the line. I think it's going to be the biggest impact for Cameron Wake because now it becomes much more difficult to double team him. Because you, you know, have to double team Sue on the line. Exactly, and and you don't want to. I mean, you don't want to let anyone have a free run at the quarterback. And Cameron Wake, we saw him struggle a little bit last year because teams were. Uh, I mean, they were double teaming up on him. They had uh, running backs that were able to go to his side. Um, it'll free him up a little bit. So I think Sue's impact isn't going to be in what he can do individually. It's about what Cameron Wake will do around him. And mm -hmm. obviously the Dolphins have other good pass rushers, but Cameron Wake, I think, will return to being 
um, one of the top three sack guys in the NFL. Absolutely, and uh, we'll, we'll combine these last two in together. A little bit of face time for you, but some other surprises maybe in the NFL this week. Yeah, well, uh, I, I think the reason we're combining these two is, you know, a little bit of a rant here yes. on my part. Uh, you know, Mark Sanchez is rated as the, as the number one quarterback in the free agent class, and I really don't understand that. In a class that also contains Brian Hoyer, who started meaningful games in the NFL last year for a team that, like you said before, uh, they were in the playoff picture for a long time, and Hoyer was the quarterback of that football team. So uh, what he brings to the table is a much more stable presence. He might not have the arm. He might not have the athleticism. But... I mean, he's just way more dependable than Mark Sanchez. I have no idea uh, why any team would would be looking at Sanchez, be looking at Hoyer, and say, you know what, mm -hmm. we want Mark Sanchez. I don't think I don't think any of the 32 teams uh, would make that would make that distinction. I mean. Uh, it's got to be it's Brian tough. Hoyer. Yeah, I think you look at maybe um, Chip Kelly's offense in Philadelphia is maybe skewing that uh, Mark Sanchez for a little bit too. A little so. bit. I mean, his offense has traditionally brought the numbers of quarterbacks mm -hmm. up because they just have to throw so many and You passes. look at a guy like Nick Foles who played so well in his first year, really played as well as Peyton Manning did for a stretch of game. <laughs> so. Uh, can't put those two quite in the same category. I so wouldn't yet. think so. Uh, so fantastic and exciting week in professional sports to complement local sports here at KU. We're going to toss the news with Anna, and we'll be back right after the break. What do you mean? What do you mean my mocha's not here? I'm Ben Allen, seriously. Where? What about here? Is that better? Oh, I'm, now my arm's disappearing. Obviously, this is even worse. Make sure you tweet at us at 3 in key on Twitter. I don't know where else you would tweet at us, but you should do that because um, I'm lonely and I need friends. Please, follow me, Ben Allen Sports. It'll make your day better. Probably not, it'll make mine better though. Literally, literally, literally. I'm back again on Good Morning KU for three weeks. I'm gonna be coming in, analyzing those teams, telling you what you need to know and why you need to know it. Cause I know things. We're going on a trip and our favorite rocket ship. Follow me on that Twitter thing, Ben Allen Sports. So March Madness is coming up. Why am I wearing a Raven shirt? Because I am a loser. Signing off, Kanishiwa. I'm back. Hi, I'm Anna Prano, and this is your Monday Good Morning KU News Update. The unemployment rate fell to 5.5% from 5.7% in January. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the economy added 295,000 new jobs in February. Businesses added jobs in places like food services, professional business, construction, and healthcare. A Lenexa UPS driver retired this week after working for the UPS for 45 years and traveling around 3 million miles. After serving in the Air Force, he chose Kansas City because the job market was better. For the last 14 years, he traveled from Lenexa to Kabul and West Plains, Missouri. That's a 546 mile round trip. Oklahoma City Thunder point guard Russell Westbrook went off again against Chica the Chicago Bulls on Thursday. He scored 43 points, 8 rebounds, and 7 assists. Prior to the game, Westbrook had four consecutive triple-double games. No one has done that since Michael Jordan. Unfortunately, when Westbrook, when Westbrook scores more than 30 points, the team is only 2-7. and seven. On campus living costs will be increasing by 2.5% uh, in the fall of 2015. Cost increase includes the scholarship halls, residence halls, and Jayhawk Towers. The price will increase by an average of $130. Two suspects in a Lawrence shooting were arrested Thursday in Las Vegas. Police have been searching for the two since a home invasion and a shooting near campus on February 8th. Robert Long and Rachel Hampton are from Lawrence and are arrested in, Vegas, in Las Vegas in an apartment. And that will wrap it up for today's news update. After the break, Tom and Griffin will be here for the weather. Oh, just Tom, actually. Studious, courteous, community service oriented. These are just a few ways to describe Sigma Pi fraternity. But don't take my word for it. Let's ask the president himself. Oh, excuse me. I didn't hear you come in. I'm Ryan Brinker, founding father and president of Beta Delta Chapter of Sigma Pi here at the University of Kansas. 
We're one of the fastest growing Greek communities here on campus. And now we want you to be a part of us too. For more information, go to KUSigmaPi.com. Welcome back into Good Morning KU. I'm Griffin Hughes here with the weather with my buddy Tom. Tom, how's the weather looking today? Weather's looking great out here, Griffin. I'm in shorts and a light jacket here. Uh, there's a high of 63 today, and there's a plenty of sunshine out there. So, Tremendous. You know, I've been loving the weather recently. Uh, can we expect more of the same throughout the week? Absolutely, yeah. I think spring might be starting, finally starting to set in. Uh, there's a high of um, 70 for the rest of the week, and um, it's going to be mid-60s to low 70s. So we should be looking for some great, great weather this week. Tremendous. That, ma that makes me really happy, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, you know, next week uh, it's going to be spring break. Um, some people are going to be staying here, some people, a lot of people going back to Kansas City. Uh, what kind of weather can we expect uh, yeah. during that week? Yeah, we can, expect, we can expect a little bit of the same weather here, Griffin. Um, it's going to be uh, mid-50s to low-60s into spring break, so those Jayhawks staying around here on campus will be able to enjoy some good weather. That's awesome, man. Are, are you doing anything for spring break? I know a lot of people are going to California. I'm sure it's going to be nice there. No, no I'm just going back home to Nebraska. Hopefully we have some of the same weather here. <laughs> yeah, you would hope, right? I hear, uh, I hear where I'm from in Colorado was pretty bad, so uh, kind of yeah. wish I was here. Anything else, anything interesting with the weather? Can we just expect more of the same? Uh, we can expect just about the same uh, for the rest of the week. No, no, precip no precipitation, just about a 10% chance the rest of the week at the most. So uh, we can expect to stay dry as well. Well, I'll tell you what, man, that is awesome. You're giving me the best news of the day. Thank you, Tom, for getting the weather. We'll be right back with Sam and Elizabeth for all the happenings at the Union. Stay tuned to Good Morning KU. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm Sam Mole, and we're here with our union guru, Elizabeth Romy. Uh, Elizabeth, what's going on with the union this week? All right. Well, as you know, the Big 12 tournament is going to be kicking off here soon. Mm -hmm. So um, you can look forward to viewing the game in big screen again on the level four of the union. Um, there won't be any official watch parties, but you can catch the game. So that'll be nice. They're still going to have the game played and everything, but it's not yes. an official watch party as yes, weeks past. Yes. And then um, the unions open, same hours throughout spring break, um, although we don't have class. And um, not much other stuff going on. Thursday is T at 3 as always, so that's always fun. I heard T at 3 last week was a huge success. They had cheesecake. Cal, our, uh, our producer here, had uh, a, a bit of it, and he said it was awesome. Um, what else is going on? Um, that is... I think that's about it. Yeah, if you're lucky, you can catch some free food at 2 mm -hmm. three. Um, for spring break now, what is going to be open for people who aren't going um, away, going back home for break and actually staying here in Lawrence? Um, just same thing as like regular school. So, I mean, you, you're welcome to grab coffee at the grocery. Um, buildings open, bookstores open. It's all, it's all running soon. Speaking of spring break, what are you doing for it? Um, I'm going to Arizona. Ari my cousin lives in Arizona. You probably really? know him. Tommy Ola? Um, no. <laughs> it's a I small <laughs> state. I'm, I'm guessing that you probably know him. I, uh, I don't know him, but maybe I'll run into yeah, him. Yeah, if you do see him, tell him I say what's up. Okay. Okay. I'm actually going out to California, Huntington Beach. Uh, my brother lives okay. out there. Oh, cool. We're leaving oh, Friday. Cool. Be there for nine days, trying to pick up some surfing oh, wow. maybe. Oh, so nice. it's going to be a good time. Nice. Get a little tan maybe. Yeah. I'm going to get my bronze on, okay. hopefully. Uh, well, that's all the time we have here. Thanks for joining us.